Hello everyone. Today we are going to talk about a new topic that is Amsler's charts. What are Amsler's charts? Amsler's chart comprises of 7 charts each with a slightly different pattern and purpose. All charts are in shape of squares covering an area of 100 cm square that is 10 cm by 10 cm. When they are held at 30 cm that is 12 inches from the eye they allow assessment of the central 20 degrees of the visual field correlating with the area inside the temporal vascular arcades that is the area around the fovea excluding the optic disc region Here you can see the different types of Amsler's chart tests Let's look at chart 1 The most familiar and widely used is the standard black and white Amsler's grid. This is merely a grid pattern consisting of 0.5 cm white or black squares each corresponding to 1 degree of visual field area that is set against a black or a white background respectively. They are arranged in 20 horizontal or vertical rows of 20 squares each. This grid helps clinician to identify various forms of distortion as well as relative and absolute scotomas. Here you can see the white Amsler's grid with black lines on it and a black Amsler's grid with the white lines on it. Chart 2 This chart is similar to chart 1 with the only difference being the diagonal lines that intersect at the center of the grid to form an X. A patient with central visual loss may respond well to this chart as compared to chart 1 as this chart gives the patient a better idea of where the fixation point is located. A larger white central spot may be applied with a tape to the center of the grid if the patient is unable to achieve or maintain central fixation. Here you can see both the types of Amsler chart with the diagonal lines that intersect at the center and form an X. Chart 3 This chart is similar to chart 1 with the only difference being the chart consisting of red squares instead of white ones on a black background. The patient who are suspected of malingering that is pretending to have a visual problem having central or paracentral visual loss due to amblyopia, alcohol related B1 deficiency, maculopathy due to over intake of quinine should be tested with this chart. It is used along with red and green glasses. Here you can see the Amsler's chart having a black background with the red lines imprinted on it. Chart 4. This chart has no lines to distort. Instead, it is filled with small white dots randomly distributed over a black background like stars in the sky. The patient with one or more areas of paracentral visual field loss may be able to recognize and record the boundaries of areas of field loss that is the areas of involvement more specifically and easily with this chart. Here you can see the Amsler's chart having a black background with the small white dots randomly distributed over it. Chart 5 This chart consists of 20 evenly spaced white horizontal lines on black background. This chart can be rotated in any other meridian at any particular axis to check for irregularities in a particular area suspected of having a visual field loss. A patient experiencing central or paracentral distortions in the visual field commonly referred to as metamorphopsia may be especially sensitive to this type of an Amsler's chart. Here you can see the Amsler's chart having a black background with evenly spaced white horizontal lines printed on it. Chart 6 The chart 6 varies slightly from chart 5 as it contains black lines against a white background. 
the areas 1 degree above and below the central fixation dot are bisected by additional horizontal lines. Metamorphopsia, that is, distortions in the visual field along the reading level may be more easily observed with this chart. Here you can see the Amsler's grid with a white background and black lines imprinted on it. The areas 1 degree above and below the central fixation dot are bisected by additional horizontal lines. Chart 7 this chart is similar to chart 1 with the difference being the white lines on black background and vice versa that divide the horizontally oriented 6 degrees by 8 degrees central area of the chart. This is the area that corresponds to the macular region into 0.5 degree squares further as compared to 1 degree squares present in the rest of the chart. This division of the central area makes the chart more sensitive detector of any finer or smaller macular compromises that might cause a visual field distortion. Subtle disturbances from the macular region of the retina can be detected using this chart. Here you can see the Amsler's chart with white lines on black background that divide the horizontally oriented 6 degrees by 8 degrees central area of the chart into 0.5 degree squares. Let's look at the modified Amsler's chart. Yanuzi's card being a minified version of the Amsler's chart, it is composed of an area of 16 cm by 10 cm consisting of 0.5 cm squares that correspond to 16 degrees by 10 degrees area of the visual field when held at a distance of 30 cm from the eye. This card can be held horizontally or vertically to cover a larger overall area of the visual field. This card is of the size of a credit card and is popular for its convenience, portability and relatively high sensitivity to visual disturbance corresponding to that in the macular region. Here you can see the Unuzi's card of the area of 16 cm by 10 cm consisting of 0.5 cm squares that correspond to 16 degrees by 10 degrees area of the visual field when held at 30 cm from the eye. Another example of modified Amsler's chart is the diamond chart. This chart is similar to Amsler's chart 5 and 6 containing evenly spaced, bold, horizontal black lines on white background. This chart contains a central red 0.5 cm fixation dot and a red diamond situated 10 cm to one side of the dot. The red dot is intended to hold the attention of the patient and the red diamond is used to ensure central fixation and monocular viewing at 40 cm distance from the eye. The chart can be rotated 180 degrees from its original position to test the fellow eye when one eye is done testing with this chart. This chart was developed to obtain more consistent and reliable responses in patients with age-related macular degeneration. Here, you can see the Amsler's chart having the evenly spaced, bold, horizontal black lines on a white background. Clinical Use and Importance The Amsler's charts have attained an important benchmark in contemporary clinical practice because of their ease of administration and accessibility. They have greatly enhanced the clinician's ability to evaluate the extent of functional damage caused by various diseases involving the different parts of the eyes such as retina, choroid, optic nerve, orbit, anterior visual system, visual pathway and cortex. Prerequisites Before the test is administered, the patient should be wearing the appropriate correction for test distance. No lights should be shown in the eyes immediately before the test and the pupils should remain normally constricted. The chart should be uniformly illuminated. The patient is asked to fix gaze on the central white or black dot and answer the clinician's questions during the test. All the questions should be logical and should be asked in a sequence, one after the other. 
Scotoma. Before starting procedure, we need to know about scotoma. To know what is scotoma, we need to know about what is threshold. Threshold. Minimum amount of light required to see an object is called threshold. Below this level of light, object can't be seen. It will be invisible. In our retina, fovea has the finest threshold. Even with dim light, object can be seen. When we move from fovea to periphery, threshold increases. We need brighter light to see object. Scotoma, a defect of visual field surrounded by a normal visual field. Relative scotoma, when in a particular area in the retina, the threshold is increased or need brighter light than normal to see object, it is called relative scotoma. Absolute scotoma, Absolute scotoma is a type of visual field defect where object can't be seen even with the brightest that is maximum light. Let us begin with the questions that we need to ask the patient in order to perform the Amsler's grid test. Question 1. Can you see the central white or black dot? The test can begin with patient viewing the chart 1 type Amsler's grid. The purpose of this question is to rule out a central scotoma, that is, a central visual loss. If the answer is yes, a central scotoma is unlikely. If the answer is, it looks washed out or slightly blurry or hazy, a central scotoma may be indicated. The patient is then asked to outline the limits of the area that appears blurry or hazy on the grid with a finger or a pen. If the answer is no, a central scotoma is present. The patient is then asked to outline the borders of the defect which is covering the central dot with a finger or a pen on the grid. If the above technique does not help with chart 1, the clinician should use chart 2 Amsler's grid. Question 2. Can you see all four sides of the large square as well as all four of its corners? The patient is asked to continue looking at the central dot while answering. If yes, the clinician can proceed to question 3. If no, the patient should be asked to outline or mark the involved area or areas and describe the defect as accurately as possible. Example, left corner of the chart is covered by the black or the white wavy cloud on looking at the white dot etc. This information may greatly assist the clinician in establishing a diagnosis. If the test is performed for patients with a history of nutritional amblyopia, long intake of chloroquine or steroids or the same is suspected, then Amsler's chart 3 should be presented to the patient. Question 3. While looking at the central dot, are any of the small squares blurry or missing on any part of the grid? The patient is asked to continue looking at the central dot while answering. If the answer is no, the clinician may proceed to question 4. If the answer is yes, then the clinician must rule out the false positive response error that may occur due to the presence of any media opacities or due to incorrect prescription worn by the patient. If the answer is still a yes and the area inside the squares is missing or are blurry, this indicates a scotoma, that is, field loss. The patient must locate the area with the missing or blurry squares, outline it with a pen and record it on the chart. The clinician can present the chart for Amsler's for better understanding of the defect. Question 4. While looking at the central dot, do any of the horizontal that is lines across or vertical that is lines up to down appear wavy or bent? If the answer is no, the clinician can proceed to the next question. If the answer is yes, the clinician must rule out the false positive response error that may occur due to the patient noticing distortion while looking through the different segment borders of a trifocal lens or while looking through the periphery of a progressive addition lens. If the answer is yes after ruling out errors, then true metamorphopsia that is distortions arising from involvement of the retinal area is present. The waviness of the lines may range from minimal to severe. 
some distorted lines may appear discontinuous or broken some squares can have barrel shaped distortions that is macropsia or have shape of pin cushion that is micropsia sometimes the vertical lines appear to be more distorted than the horizontal lines and vice versa these distortions can be well recorded using the amsler's charts 5 and 6 Question 5 Is any part of the grid or the chart shimmering flickering or colored If the answer is no the series of questions is complete If the answer is yes this is an indication of a scotoma related to retinal involvement like a hemorrhage that might cause a retinal detachment leading to distorted vision among other causes Recording the findings on Amsler's chart How to record findings on the Amsler's chart The following data needs to be recorded on the Amsler's chart name and age of the patient along with the date on which the test is performed documenting the eye to which the chart that is showing changes belongs to when both eyes were tested uniocularly with separate Amsler's grid used for each eye example right eye or OD central dot not seen left eye or os no abnormality detected etc marking or outlining the areas on the chart that showed changes as indicated by the patient and describing them in patient's words example right eye this marked corner was covered with black cloud while looking straight at the dot in the center the amsler's grid findings recorded for each eye needs to be attached along with the other ocular test findings for concluding the diagnosis let us now look at the examples of different kinds of distortions recorded on amsler's chart in different kinds of conditions here you can see a patient's amsler's chart findings for the right eye that is In right eye, Amsler's grid drawings an OCT of a patient with cystoid macular edema that is swelling in the retinal tissue due to central retinal vein occlusion can be seen here. Another example shown here are the Amsler's grid drawings seen in varied types of visual field defects due to glaucomatous effects involving the optic nerve. clinical interpretation diseases that disrupt the retinal areas may be seen on the standard amsler's grid as areas of distortions or metamorphopsia the absence of a defect does not rule out the existence of a lesion but may indicate the need for a more sensitive form of testing In the next video we are going to take a look at the types of modified testing methods that can be employed using Amsler's grid. Stay tuned with Smart Optometry for more educational videos.